because I'm going to run super fast because I have so much stuff that I would like to uh, that I would like to share with you and as you've seen the talks are like super super short um, so my artificial muse this is a project in between uh, research and art and the, the aim of the project was to explore uh, how AI how artificial intelligence can collaborate with us in artistic and creative processes. So I'm going to run super fast. No. Uh, so let me let me start with um, with a headline, and the head the headline would be something like this: the first mural fresco painting uh, designed by an artificial uh, neural network was created during a three-day-long performance at Sonar Festival this last summer in Barcelona. And this was a collaboration with Mario Klingemann, which is, I would say, like one of the best artists working with code that we have nowadays. Uh, it was a collaboration also with Mark Marzenit, who is one of my favorite uh, electronic music producers, and, and myself, who uh, I'm a postdoctoral fellow in cognitive science, and I'm also an artist. And we wanted to play with this old-fashioned concept with this old idea of a muse. And in a sense, we wanted to put that concept upside down. Uh, what is a muse? Who can be a muse? Where can we find a muse? And more, more critically, or more, more interestingly, can a muse even be artificial? Do they really need to be physical? Do, do they really need to touch uh, a physical body to get inspired? So the question was, can a computer-generated muse be as inspiring as a human-like one. And if you try to simplify, visually speaking, at, at the maximum level, this idea of a muse, you end up with a, with a human body, with a human figure. And you can draw a stigma with just a couple of traces. And you end up with something like this in a specific posture, in a specific uh, position. And let's, a quick game. If I show you this kind of artificial muse, does this one reminds you of any famous painting? Yes, exactly. Good, man. La Maja Desnuda from Goya. Another one. This, 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 should, this one should be like even easier than that. Exactly. This is the one from Michelangelo. You get the idea. What about this one? Yes. Of course. She were... Yeah. Got you. <laughs> nice. Uh, so, so the idea was to put these artificial muses as an input to this, to this artificial neural network that we designed with Mario. And obviously now I'm going to try to explain, oversimplify uh, the way we develop this, this neural network with Mario uh, in four different steps. So the first one um, was to generate these random stigmas with random postures. And the artificial neural network uh, the, the neural net that we developed created something like this. This was the first step. Okay, let's jump into the second step. The final, the final goal of this uh, neural net was given this ultra simplistic input to produce a really beautiful and amazing artwork. Second step, it was from these uh, random postures to create what we call uh, a protobody. And I think I should warn you for the images of the next slide, you will understand why, because they are a bit sensitive. This is what the machine was giving us as an output. And I, and I know that some of you are thinking right now, and I agree with you that this looks a little bit like child pornography. Uh, yes, I know that some of you uh, <laughs> thought about that, and, and it's something really interesting, but I, I would need like another data beers talk to talk about it because this was super interesting, and uh, we were amazed that the machine came up with this. Second step, from those protobodies, 
we, we, we applied it. I, I put like style transfer, but it was not a style transfer. But the idea was from those protobodies to create some kind of images that, that were more artistic with these bodies behind it. Uh, and the machine, the neural net, uh, gave us this as, as an output. And finally, this, four, this fourth step for us was the most critical one, and we call it transhancement. So the idea is that, okay, you have these low resolution images that you've just seen, uh, but you want to stretch them, you want to make like a really big uh, artwork from that. And that was super critical, because that means that each new pixel that you are adding to this image, uh, obviously is like new information, and it, it needs to have a meaningful aesthetic value for the overall uh, piece, of, piece, of, piece of artwork that you want to produce, so it was really critical. And, and, it, wa and it was really funny the way we created the relationship between myself and the machine, because we developed this, this app uh, that it was like a Tinder app, and the machine was presenting me uh, these, these muses, and I was saying yes, no, yes, no. <laughs> so when you combine this idea of Tinder app with the child pornography, let's, let's not go that way. <laughs> uh, and these guys was the final output, that the artwork that the neural net that we designed um, offered us. And I don't know if you realize it. Now with the light, maybe it's not really good, but you have to understand that this is 100% artificially produced, and it's beautiful. Obviously, that's subjective, but, but I think that this is amazing. And so the performance, the, the, the installation was, I was there for three days uh, painting a really, really big canvas that was like four meters long by two meters high, uh, using a really classical technique coming from fine arts, such as oil painting. And there was this visual projection of the machine and all the artificial muses. And then there was this third component, uh, which was music. When we realized that I had to spend more than 11 hours every day painting, uh, one of my favorite music producers say, Albert, look, I mean, you're going to get a bit more crazy than, than what you are. So you, you, you should try to focus during, during all those hours. So she produced this, this um, musical set, this uh, soundtrack for the three days. So I could listen to it, but the beautiful thing was that people were able to listen to it, and they were coming along, they were dancing with me uh, while I was painting. It was beautiful, but at the same time, it was freaking exhausting, guys. Let me tell you that, <laughs> after three days. Um, so if you want to, to know a bit more, we, sh we, we shot this, this after movie that you can check at YouTube. And obviously, this wouldn't be a data viewer's talk without any GIF or any meme. So there you go. Thank you very much. <laughs>
uh, or if you show me this other thing, I'm gonna tell you this is definitely peaks to peaks, this is from this last year. So we are already starting to see how all these um, machines with supposed um, creative capabilities uh, are already creating uh, some, some digital um, movements uh, and styles. And I think that that's really interesting from an art history perspective. The second point or reflection is that we are also realizing that we are developing new kinds of uh, aesthetic, aesthetic sensibilities uh, from artworks coming from data. Obviously, if I go to, to the National Gallery or I go to the Tate Britain um, and I focus on a specific painting, I can tear up looking at those small uh, paintbrushes and strokes and see the textures and everything. But I'm realized, I am realizing now that I'm experiencing the same kind of feelings when looking at artworks made only from data, from, from neural networks uh, and, this, and this kind of, of machines. And let me give you a couple of examples from Mario. L come on, guys. I look at this, and I, I, I can have the same kind of experience as, as if I'm looking at something man-made. And the third one that I want, and the third uh, idea, reflection that I wanted to share is that during those three days that, that I was at Sonar painting, um, I realized that there are some artistic artifacts that are, that are only present in the computational world. Uh, that means that I had like a really hard time to paint that image that was made from, uh, of pixels. It's not made from strokes. And how the hell am I supposed to recreate or to translate that texture from a JPG into a canvas with oil paintings. And I thought, it was the first time that I was experiencing that idea, and I thought, wow, this is something really, really interesting. That, that, sorry? Pointillism. 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 Yes, but then you are forcing the machine to produce you a specific kind of artwork. But yeah, that, that would be one solution. Uh, anyway, now yes, if you have questions, guys. As, as you can see, at the very beginning, I put, um, yes, artificial muses that were uh, women, but also like men in this case. Uh, but obviously, in the neural net, uh, the data set that, that, in one of the data sets that we put as a, as a training, obviously, it's images coming from, from the internet. And as you can imagine, it's not something that we, we were deciding about that. It's like, what is more general? Um, on internet, obviously in this case was for naked bodies, it was women. And that's why the machine was giving us uh, more outputs on um, bodies generated from, or that would resemble bodies from, from, from women. Um, this is more a sort of comment than a question, but just quickly, I find the, what the neural network is producing is very similar to Francis Baker. Yeah. And it's a bit scary that he's an artist who's so associated with horror and language. That's, you, it's really funny because you are not the first one um, saying something like that. And a lot of, of uh, artwork generated from this neural net, um, a lot of people told us that it, it has a, a resemble to, to some of uh, Bacon's um, work, which is funny because with the, the, in principle there was no bias at all inside of the... Um, what about uh, um, intellectual property? If that kind of art piece is built by artificial intelligence, uh, who belongs to... 
they, they asked me the same at Sonar, and I still don't know what to answer to that. I guess it's going to be 50-50 machine, and the rest for me, I don't know. I don't know. But it's, it's a really good question, and that means that we have to already start thinking on, on those terms, because it's happening. So. Well, on this. Uh, it obviously it depends on the on the neural net that that they, is behind of it, but there are already some studies and people at this point they cannot tell um, if if some artworks are man-made or are machine-made. Do you think it can overtake it? If can, if they it can, can overtake it. In what sense? <laughs> no, exactly. And with this project, we wanted exactly to do the opposite. Because in 2016, I was already asked to do kind of a battle, a, crea a creative battle with a machine uh, to see who was more creative, if the, if the machine with, uh, with AI capabilities or myself. And I had so much fun doing that during those months working on that. But after that, I realized that that was not the way to go. Uh, and this project is going exactly towards this other direction, which is like, let's explore how can we collaborate each other to get to points that we've never been before, to, ex uh, to get to experiences that we've never been before. Let's try to forget this idea of, of uh, this confrontation between man versus machine. Let, let's try to create like a symbiosis and let's work together on that. I think that's, that's the way we should be looking at that. This very positive note, let's thank uh, Albert again. Thank you.